Hey, what's up? This is Delio of DelioT2K.com YouTube channel. And this is my vlog about uh, the last writing camp I went to. It's the Boom Boom Room Productions writing camp. And this is my vlog about my experience. And the reason I'm making this video is to help other writers and producers and other creatives sort of kind of get a more understanding of, of what it is because typically when you hear about these writing camps you might see it like how I do on like on Instagram or post where you may know somebody who's doing it and they talk to you about it and you know you feel interested in your, and in your journey as you're trying to find your way in the world of this whole musical industry thing you know you you consider trying out something like this but uh, you know typically with the situation a lot of people have to apply and then you sort of get approved um, and this is like my third songwriting camp that I've been to and um, each experience has taught me uh, how to experience them better so in this video um, I just want to talk about my vlog and my experience about it um, it was it was overall good but there were some places that I could have saw there be an improvement um, in the same way how when I was pitching hooks they you know it was asked that I make uh, improvements on the hooks that I wrote so um, you know, I feel it's only fair that I give my assessment as a content creator on this platform and sort of just give you my experience again, make a more educated decision of what you want to do and, uh, you know, talk about how I feel about it. So let's talk about it. So it was at, it was on a Sunday and it was like from 10 PM to 12 PM and it was at Stank on your studios. Um, if you're not familiar with Stank on your studios, Stank on your studios is, the studio that is uh, sort of ran and owned by Outcasts, but as I know it, um, it's more of Big Boy's thing than Andre's thing. So there's that, but um, you know, it's that that the whole Dungeon family. There's a lot of history there at that studio. I've always wanted to go there, and you know, this is a great, interesting reason to be there. Obviously, none of the members of Outcasts were there, but you know, part of you kind of wish they were. But you definitely saw the um, the uh, remnants of the presence all over that place. Uh, it's a nice facility and it you know you wouldn't know it, it was there which is how a lot of studios are in Atlanta are unless you know it's there or you know about it, you're not going to really know about it it's sort of like a private thing right until you like can get in but uh, you know it's cool there are a lot of people there and when we had our introductions like this So hopefully you already know what we're doing here. We are making hooks, hooks only for the principal artists of Boom Boom Room Productions, right? Um, so when you're thinking about uh, Sleepy Brown, Big Boy, CeeLo, um, Outkast, um, Run the Jewels, plus those sync licensing placements that come along with that. Those are the records we're making. Mm -hmm. We want y'all strongest creativity today. We encourage you to be your highest selves, right? Um, we trust your professionalism. We want a, a concentration on creativity, but a high focus on efficiency. 45 minutes in and out. Just make sure you holler at one of us We'll, we'll hear your hook, let you know, okay, that's good, ready to go in, you cut that, and then we good. At the end of the night, we're going to hear everything, won't be recutting anything. If we have any tweaks, any mixes like that, we'll fix that, and uh, that's it. And so you felt really good, you know, and uh, uh, oftentimes, you know, you can get the description and the email of, you know, what to bring, like, for instance, in this case, the producer, the ooh, excuse my words, but the producers were sort of instructed to bring some tracks already, um to present to other writers and things of that nature however in this case um we didn't really have an opportunity to play the tracks we already did unless you had brought your own laptop and oftentimes for me with the experiences i've had with songwriting camps it's like okay do i bring too much or too little and uh, i leaned more on the bring it and not need it than need it and not bring it mentality however um it was cool. And, you know, we got paired up by random. We didn't know who you're going to work with. So that's one thing you have to consider is that you don't know who you're going to work with. So you don't know what their talent level is um, as far as how it complements yours. But thankfully, I worked with some people that complemented my style. Uh, I actually worked directly with two ladies at this uh, camp, uh, Naya and Boss Lady, uh, which was really cool. And, uh, you know, we got in the studio. Well, before we even got in the studio, I got set up. And, uh, you know, once we kind of had that break, um, we were sort of on our own as far, as far as finding a place to work. And I was like, okay, well, I'll go to the live room. Nobody's in there. Not an issue. So I set up on a stage with my speaker. Set up the NPC. We're sort of settling in. But unfortunately, um, I believe one of the engineers or staffs of the place uh, asked us to leave um, because uh, the sound of my speaker was interfering with the recordings. So they could hear it in the booth. 
um, which is definitely a, a reasonable uh, scenario that they would like to have corrected. But I was kind of feeling like, dang, OK, um, where else can I go? I guess we the cook up or the creative part of this was not the priority to me. And, it, you know, it felt like that. And I was like, mm. and, I, and I sort of kept that to myself because um, I already paid my money to be here. So what can I do to make the best of it? But I was like, OK, if I get moved again, I don't know if I got any more kicked out, kick out to me left to go somewhere else. So uh, we went some to see what comes to your life. We got Naya right there. Naya official, the most official in the building, period. There, there you go right there. And we were in the live room, but we're getting kicked out. Yeah. Uh, we're sorry. too lit already too lit, at too this high. camp, so we're going to find somewhere else to uh, make some noise and go from there. They so anyways. Anyway, it don't even matter. <laughs> matter. So we're going to find somewhere else to go. Where else, another group came in where we were at. Um, and pretty much, I think I was the only one in this uh, song camp with an NPC and a speaker. And uh, there were some other people that speak that I saw, but they, they sort of kind of staked out their claims uh, in other rooms that are more private so they can kind of be a little bit more louder. And uh, we sort of went out to Tito's Lounge and um, rebuilt, <laughs> rebuilt the setup. But I had a smaller speaker, so I brought that. And that was cool. And, you know, we just started to cook. And, you know, she had some songs she wrote. And we were just sort of cooking that up. Um, you can see clips of this. This is on the Instagram and uh, that was cool but the only thing that sort of threw me off at that point was uh, sort of kind of having to stop and have quiet on the set so they could film uh, interviews and I've, I I didn't like that um, I, I cooperated but I didn't like that I didn't like that because I felt like I thought the creation of getting hooks done and the, the cook up was a priority but for us to have to stop what we're doing and so y'all can film you know to me felt like content creation was more of a higher priority than uh creating hooks and um but i i didn't really i didn't like that but i didn't complain because you know sometimes in this scenario um i wanted to exercise some flexibility so i did but i just didn't like that feeling i didn't i didn't like the feeling because and i'm spoiled the reason i'm i didn't like that feeling because I'm spoiled. I can, I can create here, um, or you know, I have a space where I can create where I'm not interrupted or or stopped by people. You know, um, that's that's a that's a big part of why I'm here. And so, you know, for me, because I was spoiled, it's like, ah, uh, really? Okay. But even still, I had bought a media package was an additional cost, the fee of attending this thing. Um, so of course I did want my footage too as well, but it just, just kind of felt weird, but you know, we didn't let that stop us, uh, from creating the hooks and, you know, we had hooks and, and, the the artist that I was working with was pulled away to record for someone else's song. So I guess there must've been a previous working relationship there. I was like, Oh, okay. So I just said, Hmm, well, I'll just cook up a little bit. So I was cooking beats. Uh, another singer came by and I think she was just checking out tracks other producers were playing. And, uh, you know, sat by me and then we started kind of cooking up something. And and uh, I think she came by because um, letter L uh, heard the hook that I wrote and said, let me hear a female sing it. And I was like, all right, go ahead and do it that way. And she came in and sung it. And it came out pretty good. And you'll see in the studio that we, we put down something. I think it will be good for a Sierra record. Yeah. Telling me what you need. I'll back it up, back it up on you. You gon' you gon' you gon' see, boy. You gon' you gon' see. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay. Yo, you good. This, a, this is a very tense situation. I don't know if y'all know that or not. You know? Oh, you're doing just fine. You're gonna be great. Let's just start with you. 
Camp from your perspective, you might have did two or three songs, right? I don't know how many we got. It might be 15, it might be 20, it might be 25. I don't know. We're gonna see when we get in there, right? And so you get a chance to see what everybody else is doing. Taze, you got anything for him? Uh, I listen, I appreciate every one, each and every one of y'all. Sorry, late. <laughs> uh, once all the things were recorded, I was in, I was like probably one of the last groups that recorded a song with an artist, and we got in there. And we put the hook down, and that was cool. But we were at time uh, because we had to, the engineers had to kind of round up all the hooks everybody recorded. And we were listening to them all in the A room. The A room was packed. Um, it was a little too packed, in my opinion, uh, because I, I like to have space and be able to move around. But, you know, it, it kind of felt like more of a party to me <laughs> at that point, which, I, which was probably the point. So, I think that for me, the adjustments I had to make was to not take it as seriously as I probably am default to, to do when it comes to just music related stuff because I want to see happen. I want to see it. I like efficiency. I like things being organized, you know, and I don't want to be up on somebody, you know, but um, you definitely filled up the A room and I could tell that the engineers were protecting their speakers in the A room because they were turning their, you know, it was loud. But I know it can go louder, but but because I'm an engineer myself, I can and I know how things kind of work. They're protecting their system. You know, I could tell that and I could respect that. Who did that? Who started that? Who And, uh, you know, we all listen to everybody's track. Everybody had good songs. We were all vibing. And, you know, definitely people were filming. There was definitely cameras. There was nonstop filming. Uh, it was so much filming. And video was such an importance that every member had their sign releases. Um, on the other hand, though, I did benefit from that because I did get photos and stuff that I could share on social media. If you want to see those photos, just go to my Instagram page or my Facebook page on Facebook. And you can check that out. And, um, you know, I think overall it was cool. Um, and I think the personal adjustments I would have to make or would have made is, is not to take it as serious. It may have been easier for me to just bring my laptop and be another FL, FL Studio producer there because that's probably much 99% of the producers were there was on their laptops. Either Logic, everybody, you know, and that's not a, a, that's not a jab, you know. Uh, I definitely felt like an outlier with my MPC. Um, but I think it's easier to navigate. And if you had a Mac, you could airdrop your tracks to the producer. And that was cool. And, um, you know, and they said there, yeah, it's a possibility, you know, that something can happen to this. You never know, which is definitely true. You never know. But at the end of the night, I'm sort of like, well, okay, well, dang, where do we where do we go from here? Outside of me networking and doing records with some new producers and, and friends that I met, you know, um, you know, you don't know how close you are to an actual deal or, or life change, you know. And, and I think, in my opinion, I think that's what everybody there is looking for, is for that one opportunity to change their lives. And I think this was uh, an attempt to see if there's any of that there. And like I said, I think for me, sometimes I just take it serious. You know, I just like, yeah, I want to really see something pop. Um with this or anything i get into you know but it was it, but it felt more like a like a camp like a party and so i was able to adjust adjust my mind frame to sort of kind of be balanced because at first i was really upset at being interrupted 
and uh, having to move, you know, it really felt like that. Okay, I guess I'm not the priority here, even though I paid the money to be here. But I, I adjusted and said, okay, well, I really don't know the whole story, right? And uh, it was definitely a, a cool learning experience. Um, would I do more camps? I probably would just to see where they're at. But they are costly. Like the cost of this camp was like $250 for this 10 hours. And what do you get for that $250? You get access to the Stink Only Studios. Um, you know, you could have booked a, a B room or C room for about that much with an engineer, probably for $250. Now, and I'm estimating. And, um, you know, it was, it was cool. Um, you know, I can't do a bunch of them. And this is like the third one I've been to. And I think from a business standpoint i could see how this could be a profitable venture to do if you're the company who's throwing this you got i mean it must have been over 20 people there so you do the math 20 times 250 you know you got money to pay yourselves to pay the staff um there's a lot of money flowing through in that and you had to make the best of it for yourself meaning you had to you know build your own networking um you know cut your own records like and, and in my opinion if, if you just want to cut records and that's the thing like the the connections that they have and this is not a a jab and i wanted to make sure that this this is a, a vlog of my experience but you know it's like okay what are y'all connections who y'all pitching it to or tell us who we can pitch to you know we didn't get that information and i would have liked that you know i would have liked to know how could i how can I pitch, you know? And that may be looking for too much in this scenario. Um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm sure they made some good money. They about to do another one. You know, they about to do another one. And that's cool. And I think that uh, if I were to attend another one, you know, the first thing is I probably want to make sure that this is money that I don't have a problem with feeling like, I'm losing or investing, you know, because it's an investment. 250 bucks. There's some camps be have you go all day for five. I mean, they really tax attendees to go to these things. Um, that seems to be the pattern uh, as far as what I see with songwriting camps. Um, but I understand that there's a business side of it. And it just makes me really wonder if I were to throw my own songwriting camp and charge that kind of money. What would I do? to really have them leave with something when they go home that they could not have gotten on their own what you know and i just think about that but overall it was a good learning experience um i made it work um if if i if i what would determine me going again if i had the extra funds to do it um but however you know i think that if i had extra funds to do it or if i'm just in the mood to network or just see what it is like or, in my opinion, I feel like I would like to see what other song camps are like and see how that vibe is. I've been to three, and I think everybody who manages the song camps has a different experience. And I'm, I'm, I'm new to it. I haven't been to a lot. Um, and the reason, I, and I can't really tell you what the reason is, but I think about recording. If I want to record a hook, I can, I can give you a hook right here, right now. You know, I got to pay you to give you a hook. I can give you a hook right here, right now. That's what you look for if you want, you know. Um, so, you know, but but my position isn't like how a lot of people are. Um, and I'm still growing. I'm still growing and I'm still learning, right? And so um, I'm going to be doing another video talking about maybe things to bring to a song camp to kind of have you be prepared, some mindset mentalities. So you can extract as much value as you can from the experience um especially with the cost of admission to these things you know um but definitely the relationships can be built uh it is a business um the studio does have to be paid for the studio has to be profitable you can't just come in there which i get it but in any case i you know i'd like to hustle up my own money sell some products and rent my own throw my own events you know and um uh, you know it's probably a challenge like like i said this is from an attendee perspective but i always like to look and see what's under the hood right but that's my experience with the boomer overall it's good um would i recommend someone else going yeah i think i think i would just make sure that um 
you know you manage your expectations with that um don't expect believe things can happen believe things can change believe opportunities to come but um you know it's not guaranteed you know like okay we did got these songs where where are these songs yeah we gave you our pro information um but where do we where do we go from here you know so and that's that's sort of kind of like where i stand okay i did this that's good where do i go from here to achieve my dream where do i where do i go from here to turn my life around where do i go from here to establish a more serious career in this field you know so those are my thoughts and i hope this helps you get some insight about songwriting camps um that can help um like i said they're fun good experience good learning experience um don't take them as serious as i like did coming in um but like i said if you're willing to be flexible um you definitely should be good all right so that's my vlog i'll see you on the flip side